Hi friends and welcome back to my channel. So on today's video, I'm super excited to show you a few of the techniques that I have learned throughout the years and throughout my times using tipless piping bags. In the beginning, I was very afraid to use them because I wasn't familiar with them and I was used to using just regular piping bags like Wilton with piping tips. But today I'm going to share with you a few of the basics how to tie your bags, how to cut them, and if you want to, how to use them with piping tips like you see here. So let's get started. As you become more comfortable, you will find a brand of tipless piping bags that work for you. This is the brand that I prefer and that I use, and I do have it in two sizes. I have a small and then I also have a larger size that I use for larger batches of icing and what I like to do is I'll always like to have a glass to help me prop up my bag so that I'm able to fill it and for example let's do say that you use a lot of these bags often like I do sometimes I'll rewash them dry them and use them again but they'll already have a little hole on the bottom so it's always good to place a little paper clip or an office clip at the bottom so that when you go to fill it again in case you're reusing it it doesn't start to flow out from the bottom the first thing that we want to do is we want to go ahead and fill our bag and this is how I like to do it. I've tried uh, holding the bag and filling it at the same time but like I said this is a way that makes it easier for you to fill your bag especially when you're a beginner and especially if you're having to mix several different colors. Now what we really want to do is just like buttercream, we want to make sure that we take out all of the air bubbles. So I like to use a spatula or just a flat scraper to push all the icing all the way to the front as far as you can into the bag. Now that our bag is filled with icing, I'm going to show you a few options for tying your bags. And the first option is called a tie bag or a bag tie. Sorry, I said that backwards. Um, and as you can see here, they're very easy to use. You can definitely tighten them a little bit more and your icing is very secure and it's very easy to remove to refill your bag or to reuse your bag. Our second option is called a bag clip or a chip bag clip. Um, it depends on how you find it online, but this one is in the shape of a bow. It's super cute and it's going to hold your bag very, very secure. As you can see here, none of your icing will leak through the top. It does take a little bit of learning while, while holding your bag, but it is a very cute option. For my next options, they are bag clips or office clips. And basically what I like to do is I'll tie or twist tie the entire top of the bag, fold it in the center, and then basically attach my office clip to the very top there. And as you can see, this gives you a little bit of a better grip when icing your cookie. So these two are my favorite and my most preferred methods for tying my bags because of this specific reason because it gives me a better grip on my bags. The next thing that we are going to discuss is cutting the bag hole or how big to cut the bag hole because I know that when I first started this was one of the things that terrified me because when you're using the actual tips for your icing bags they already come pre-cut the hole is there so there's no guessing here what I'm just doing is I'm actually finding the seam and I'm going to cut against the seam and here I just have a little sample of how I'm going to cut my bag and I basically have all the Wilton tips from number one which is the smallest hole as you see here and it's preferred to use for small writing I also have Wilton tip number two Wilton tip number three, four, and all the way to number five being one of the biggest holes that is in the tips that I have here. So I do like to use the actual tips as a gauge to see how much I'm going to cut off of my bag. 
through the years I have become a little bit of a not an expert but I already know how much to cut but when you're beginning make sure that you're using um, these tips as a guide it makes it a little bit easier to gauge how much you're going to have to cut off and like I said always try to cut with the seam right in the center so that you ensure that you get a perfect circle sometimes when you cut with the seam on the side your circle will become a little bit dipped um, if that is the case or in case you can't get the seam in the center you can always go back and here is what I'm talking about my tip is a little bit crooked so you can always take tiny tiny scissors and make sure you straighten out that cut so that when you're using it to ice or to flood or outline your cookie it's not coming out crooked as reference I am using stiff consistency royal icing because I want to show you how this size of hole uh, writes when you use your Wilton number one tip and basically what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and trace these words that are on this ruler so that you're able to see the thickness of the icing using that size of tip when using this tipless bag I hope that makes sense and I hope I didn't confuse you but usually when writing words I do like to use stiff consistency royal icing and as always I'll leave links in the description box to any previous recipes that I've made but here is how my letters look and usually I would use this uh, tip size to maybe outline a thicker letter or a thicker word or simply to write here I want to show you how a tip number two looks when using stiff consistency royal icing and I'm doing exactly what I did in the beginning so I'm just taking my tip placing it over my bag and then cutting off the excess as you'll notice here I did go ahead and straighten out my hole a little bit by using these tiny scissors to straighten the cut and basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to trace the rest of the sentence or the rest of the phrase. Here's a closer look at the tip number two hole using a tipless bag. And you'll see that this gives you a lot thicker of royal icing. So this way you're able to practice and see what works for you, when to use what sizes. And I just feel like it's a little bit easier when, especially when you're a beginner to use uh, actual piping tips as your guides so that you're able to gauge how much to take off or how much to cut off the next time that you're using a tipless bag. Next, I'm going to use the exact same consistency and what I want to do here is I'm going to make this into a leaf shape and I am using the seam as a guide and basically cutting either an arrow or however you want to think of it, the bottom of a heart so that it looks like a triangle at the top and again I am using stiff consistency royal icing so that it's able to hold up its shape a little bit better. And what we want to do is we want to make sure to use the seam side up so that you're able to use it as a guide. And basically I'm going to push out the icing with my hand and then just go ahead and pull. And using that middle seam as a guide, I'm going to go ahead and pull up like a leaf. The next shape that we are going to cut is going to be into a ruffle and basically what I'm doing is taking the exact same bag with stiff consistency royal icing and I'm simply cutting a slope. And as you see my seam is in the center there 
You can also use it where the seam is the top of your slope or the bottom. But here, what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to take the pointy side down. And as before, I'm going to make sure to squeeze with my palm and then just drag the bag of icing all along until it forms ruffles. And again, that is with the pointy side down onto your cookie. Also, just because you're using tipless piping bags does not mean that you can't use them with tips. Usually what I like to do is I'll take a totally different bag, I'll insert a coupler, and then I'll take a little pair of scissors and remove the tip at the bottom there. And I don't usually put royal icing straight into this bag, but in case I already have the consistency that I want, I'll simply take the little bag like the blue one here, insert it into the bag that has the coupler, and then I'm just going to go ahead and tie that like I did before, and I'm going to go ahead and place my tip at the bottom there and what this does is it actually helps to speed up your process you don't have to mix a whole new consistency bag of icing to have just for the tips you can take bags that you already have pre-made if they are the same consistency and you can just slip them into a empty bag that has a coupler and you're able to easily go back and forth between using different tips and different cuts of your icing bags. What I really like about this technique is that you're able to use small piping tips to add different textures to your cookies. For example, here I'm just making a small shell border. You can also use it to make a little bit of a chain swirled border and this adds a lot of definition, a lot of texture to your cookies using the exact same bag of tipless icing except using it with another bag that has a tip. It's a great time saver and I love it. Here's a little bit of a closer look at the techniques that we made today. I definitely hope that this was a little bit helpful for you. Let me know in the comments below if you have ever used tipless piping bags or why you haven't. Are you afraid? Let me know in the comments below. Please share this video with a friend. Don't forget to give it a like. And also, don't forget to subscribe before you go so that you don't miss any of the new videos that I post. Thank you so, so much for watching and I'll talk to you next time. Bye!